Wow. What an intense, absolutely intense episode of The Walking Dead. That was amazing. Uh, probably one of the most action-packed, suspenseful, and just brutal episodes of the series that we have seen so far. That was amazing. Hey everybody, Derek here, and I'm here to bring you my review for the 12th episode of Season 6, which is Not Tomorrow Yet. If you have not watched the episode and you do not want to be spoiled in any way, then exit the video now and come back later, because otherwise you will be spoiled. Okay. So, I mean, again, this was an absolute brutal episode. I mean, there were a lot of deaths uh, that were done in a very brutal fashion uh, as Rick's group uh, went to attack the Saviors. Uh, just absolutely shocking, and a lot of developments for a lot of the characters. Um, I really loved how this episode really brought a lot of different characters together that we really hadn't seen for a while, like Carol and Morgan. Uh, you know, it was nice to actually bring them into the fold. Uh, so that was one of the great elements of it. And speaking of Carol, uh, Carol played a very big part in this episode. More than half of the episode was really focused uh, on, on some of her story. Um, and what we found out is that since the time um, that Carol and Morgan uh, had their little incident with the wolf, uh, it turns out that Carol did not tell anyone um, about what Morgan did, uh, about Morgan keeping the wolf inside of uh, the cell. And she was able to convince Denise, Tara, Eugene, and Rosita not to say anything either. And the reason being is because they didn't want um, you know, Morgan to get into trouble because they figured if they found out that, you know, Morgan was doing that, well, people like Rick would not be as understanding about that. So we see her doing that for Morgan. Um, and the, the beginning of the episode is very different. You know, it has a very, uh, nice touch. There was a nice song playing. You see, uh, Carol making some cookies and handing them out to people. And it was beat and acorn cookies. Very interesting recipe. And she actually walks by and gives one to Tobin and has a very nice moment with um, with him, uh, which I'll explain later on. Some things happen with the both of them as well. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we see in the episode uh, is Carol really taking on this uh, different approach, maybe. You know, I think that really a lot of the things that had been happening over the last several episodes had been getting to her. And I think that she was really trying to, you know, figure out what was going on with her. You know, the fact that she uh, had killed a lot of people, the fact that she was going to certain extremes to do some, you know, things to people. I think that she was having a little bit of trouble, um, you know, internally with herself. It was a big conflict. And, you know, I think that Tobin really did an amazing job of summing that all up for her. Um, because later in the episode, Carol and Tobin are sitting outside smoking cigarettes, and, you know, they're talking about the fight that's going to happen tomorrow. And, you know, Tobin notes that, you know, Carol's going to go on this mission and that she can do these, you know, terrible things uh, that really, you know, in a sense scare him at times, you know, that she can put herself uh, in that kind of a uh, battlefield uh, to potentially kill people. But Tobin really relates it to Carol uh, being a mother, um, that she's able to do this. And I think that really does a very good, you know, justice uh, to Carol as a character. You know, I think that Carol being a mother and taking on motherhood-like qualities does, in a sense, make her act in the manner that she does. She may not always use the best approach, but I think that that's really what she sees within herself, is that not only is she a mother in real life like to Sophia, but she's been like a mother figure to Daryl, to many of the other characters. And one of the things that you, you know, hear about mothers and, you know, it's kind of a, it's attributable to mothers, is that they will do what it takes um, you know, to provide for their children, you know, I mean, you hear about stories of people that will go to the ends of the earth to protect their children, you know, if their children were put in some kind of a dangerous situation, and I think that's really what 
Carol does, is that she really uh, has adopted this motherly persona, which allows her to dig deep and have the strength to do things to protect other people. And I think that really defines her very well. And we see her doing that in this episode, you know, her protecting uh, Morgan from, um, you know, finding out about what happened, you know, the other people, and also seeing that with Maggie. Um, in the episode, uh, Maggie actually uh, decides to go on this mission, and the reason why is because she says, well, I got everybody into this, so I need to do my part. So she goes out there, um, and she, while she's just going to watch the perimeter, she's still out in the open, and Carol objects to this. Um, you know, saying, hey, Maggie shouldn't be out here. Maggie's pregnant. Maggie needs to be, um, you know, taking care of herself. And she actually, Carol separates herself to, to go with Maggie instead of going inside the compound. Um, and while the two are out there, you know, Carol turns around and says, you know, Maggie, what are you doing? You know, you shouldn't be out here. You're supposed to be somebody else. You're supposed to be back at Alexandria protecting yourself, protecting the life of your unborn child in a sense. And I think that we see that motherly figure really uh, expressed in Carol's actions in this episode. And it was really nice to see. And I think that it really um, allows Carol a little bit of peace. Um, you know, because again, we do see in the episode that she does write down the names of the individuals that she has killed since the show began. And she wrote that she had killed 18 people. But I think that in a sense, she's able to justify it why she did what she did. Um, and I think that she's becoming a little bit more at peace with it and is finding her role uh, a little bit better, a little bit better than she was before. And we actually see her place a cookie on Sam's grave. So we see that there's still that, you know, connection between Carol and Sam. And I think that implicitly Carol knows, um, you know, some of the things that Sam was going through. And I think that really, um, I think that it's what has caused her to maybe want to change her approach and change the person that she is a little bit. She hasn't done a complete 180, but I think that she's definitely dealing with her situation a lot better than she was before. Um, other things that happened in this episode, Abraham does break up with Rosita. Um, they took care of that uh, in this episode. He packs up and he leaves. And basically he you know, uses the same logic that he uses in the comics. That when, you know, he first met Rosita, he thought that she was the last woman on Earth, which, you know, at the time could be understandable. But as time went on, he met more people. He realized that she wasn't. There were other people out there that he was a better fit for. And he wants to explore those options. This, of course, breaks Rosita. Um, you know, it absolutely upsets her. And, you know, I think that it makes sense, you know, that she would have that kind of a reaction. And, you know, it is definitely bad timing on Abraham's part to do that right before they were going to go out and kill people. But, you know, hey, I, you know, it was just the time uh, in the story. And again, I think that Abraham didn't want to keep lying. I think that it does uh, make sense. You know, he'd been lying to her for a while. And I think it was the right, um, you know, way to at least deal with the situation rather than keep uh, extending the uh, heartbreak more and more. Um, we also have Tara um, telling Denise that she loves her. Um, it turns out that Tara and Heath are still going on this supply mission. Um, and we see Tara telling Denise uh, that she does love her. And Denise, you know, basically kind of takes it in a little bit of an interesting way. You know, she, I think they both feel things for each other, but she basically says, well, I'll tell you I love you when you get back. Maybe giving uh, Tara some kind of an incentive to fight hard so she can come back. Um, and I think that, you know, it's definitely going to be hard for Tara in these next couple of episodes because I do get concerned about what's going to happen with her um, when she goes on the supply mission with Heath, I, I really do worry that the two of them are going to run into trouble um, while they're out there. And, uh, you know, another thing that we see, you know, is the group actually, you know, making the decision to go out and fight the saviors. Rick does call that meeting, says, hey, you know, these saviors are bad people. They've done terrible things. Um, we have to come for them before they come for us because, you know, it, it makes sense. They're eventually going to find us like they found all these other communities. And if they get here, they're going to kill some people and they're going to do us harm. And we can't do that. We have the advantage of the group. You know, the saviors don't know us. So, 
you know, Rick um, does ask if anybody objects, and of course Morgan does object. Um, and definitely, you know, like I predicted, uses a very crafty approach. You know, he uses this idea of, you know, not coming out and saying, well, I believe all life is precious, so this is what we have to do. But, you know, saying, hey, you know, let's use a more sensible approach. Um, you know, why not just go and talk to them? Look, we know we're tough. They're probably going to know we're tough. Uh, let's just go and talk. That way we can prevent the bloodshed. But uh, nobody else agrees with him. Um, you know, it, it would basically, according to Rick and the rest of the group, give up their position, give up their advantage, and they don't want to do that. And you see Aaron standing up, kind of like how he left the photographs um, laying in the uh, season finale of season five, and the wolves found them and attacked the uh, community. You know, he says, we're not going to let that happen again. And if we go there and we talk to them, we're letting them know who we are, and they're going to, you know, search for us. So... You know, Morgan's plan is shot down, and, you know, we see Rosita taking a little bit of offense to that. Um, you know, right before Carol and Rosita break off to go into different places, uh, Rosita, you know, brings that up to Carol. She goes, you know, what does he think he's doing, you know, standing up there and acting like he's better than all of us? And, you know, she says he, he should be thanking us. He should be thanking us that, you know, we didn't tell Rick what happened, that he's allowed to still live there. Um, despite everything that happens. And, you know, we see again Carol coming to Morgan's defense in a sense. Um, but you see where Morgan, um, you know, is definitely causing those clashes. And I think that, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what approach Morgan takes because we see him at the very end of the episode. Um, he's working with some, um, I think he was working with a blowtorch and like some metal rods or something so i don't know if he's trying to build up that jail cell if he's building something else up but he was working on something um and rick of course doesn't make him fight you know rick basically says well if people don't want to fight that's okay you know i'm not going to force anybody however they are going to have to accept the fact that people are going to be killed and that's just the way that it is so they come up with this plan they're going to kill a walker that looks like gregory they're going to disguise it and then Andy is going to go to the meeting place, present the head, make them think that they killed Gregory, and then hopefully get Craig back. They are able to find a walker, although they note that the nose might not look right. And Rick actually punches the walker head um, in the nose to kind of, um, you know, make up, you know, the story. Uh, well, Gregory fought back, we broke his nose, and Andy got his hand broke in the process. And it just really, you know, was one of the very defining moments of the episode because really a lot of this concept of the episode was you know just the br the brutal nature of what the group had to do and you know again really justifying the ethics behind it you know we know based on the comic books a little bit about the saviors and we've heard stories but nothing had happened to the group yet at this point and we see them doing some pretty brutal things and some of them are able to shrug them off and some of them aren't um because you know, Andy basically tells Rick, he's like, you know, you kind of scare me more than the, the saviors do. And, you know, because Rick did that without really blinking an eye. And you see people in this episode killing individuals without blinking an eye, which, I mean, I can't say that I blame them for the nature of the, of the, the saviors, you know, who they are. But this was a lot different, um, you know, because the group ends up going to the compound. Um, Andy is able to make the trade. And basically, they put their plan into action, where they take out the guards outside quietly. Um, Daryl kills one, Michonne kills one, basically with blades. You know, they slit their throats or stab them in the, you know, torso region, and then they all go in. And we see different, you know, people taking on the saviors in a quiet manner. You know, this is almost like, you know, Call of Duty, like those quiet missions where you, you know, you sneak around and when you see a bad guy, you stab them in the throat and kill them or something well the saviors were sleeping you know in their beds and basically you have scenes of like rick you know going into the room and when he sees somebody in a bed would stab him in the throat and the head and kill them um you know not like other other times where it has been people that have attacked you know rick and the group first this time you have rick's group being the aggressors and it definitely was a different feel um, you know, definitely a lot more shocking and a lot more brutal to see the group actually do this and to see who is involved because, you know, this was a time where people killed 
who had never killed before. And I mean Glenn. Glenn killed for the first time in this episode somebody who wasn't a walker, which is something that's been a running trait with him, not wanting to kill, not wanting to do this, and then, you know, potentially ruining the future. But with the way that things were, uh, Glenn found that, you know, this was the time that things had to be done to protect his wife, to protect his people, and to protect, you know, his unborn child. And we see Glenn and Heath talking about that before and saying, you know, how both of them had been lucky. Both of them had been lucky that they had not had to kill, that somebody else had stepped up and done the job for them in a sense. But um, in this episode, we see Glenn having to kill, and it, it is just like how Rick killed some people. Um, Glenn walks into the room and stabs the savior in the throat while he's sleeping and kills him. He is not able to kill his guy, and Glenn actually does it for him, because both of them express concern about being able to do this. And, you know, we see that Glenn has just had more of an experience. He's had more uh, run-ins with dangerous people, so I think he was more inclined to be able to do this, whereas Heath was not. Um, but, you know, that was very, very um, significant for his character. He has finally killed someone. And one of the things that we saw was that in the room that they were in, there were pictures on the wall of, you know, bodies with heads, basically. You know, it looked like they were caved in, and it makes me wonder if that's foreshadowing something coming up in the comics, because it almost looks like either walkers or humans that have basically been, you know, beaten with some kind of blunt object to the point where their faces and their bodies you know, are basically unrecognizable. Um, I'll talk about that in a different video, but uh, that might have been a foreshadowing moment. Well, the close quarters combat thing, you know, eventually comes to a close because somebody, you know, discovers that they've been invaded and an alarm goes off. So now we see, um, you know, the group actually going into full battle. You know, different people are shooting at different people. Uh, Glenn and Heath are actually able to make it to the armory, and they're able to kill several of the saviors because you know, through the door. Uh, they get, you know, large heavy machine guns and shoot through the door and basically kill several of them as well. Um, and we also see um, other people killing, like Gabriel. Gabriel, as we know, decided to go on this mission. And a lot of people, you know, were wondering, you know, like, why was he doing this? And Rick actually talks with him about that, you know. And Gabriel says, well, you know, I'm still a priest, but, you know, I'm also going to step up. Um, and you saw a little bit more camaraderie there. Um, and we did see a scene where Gabriel did have to kill um, somebody. Uh, and during the process, you know, he was praying, you know, and giving the guy a, a final prayer as he was killing him. And Tara also killed somebody in this episode. I don't think she's ever killed a human before either. So people that had never killed before, it was crunch time and they had to do it and they did. Um, but as the episode ends, um, it turns out the group was, you know, in their mind successful. They had killed all the enemy, didn't sustain any casualties themselves, you know, which, you know, I, I mean, I, I have mixed feelings about that. You know, part of me is glad I don't want to see anybody die. But on the other hand, it's like, is that really realistic? You know, I mean, I said, first off, these saviors are like quiet sleepers. I mean, they must have had an easy time because, you know, a lot of people are more alert with, you know, walkers and things. They must have felt really secure because nobody woke up, you know, while they were going in the room. Um, but, you know, they're able to uh, defeat the saviors. The only injury is Abraham who gets stabbed at one point. That's it. They go outside and they find one more that is riding away on a, on a motorcycle. And it turns out that it's Daryl's bike. And they start to interrogate the guy when somebody gets on a radio and says, um, you know, to lower their guns and, you know, that they, they better address them. It, it was a woman's voice. And she says, uh, we got a Carol and we got a Maggie. Uh, and I think that's something that you might want to be concerned about. So it turns out the international promo was true and it was the end of the episode. Um, Maggie and Carol off screen were taken hostage by what I presume to be female saviors. And it looks like there might be some kind of a trade in the future. There might be something else going on. But at this point, 
the, the circumstances have changed and it looks like Rick's group is going to have a little bit more of a challenge moving forward. Because one of the questions they asked was, well, I wonder which one of these people was Negan. And obviously they didn't tell Negan, you know, um, and I think that they're going to realize that maybe the situation was worse than what they thought. You know, again, I think that maybe that wasn't exactly where they lived. I think that might have been just one of the areas that they house saviors, and I think we're going to see in the future there's a lot more of them out there, and I think that they're uh, definitely going to uh, be very upset with what happened, and I think it's going to spell some bad things for uh, Rick and the group in the future. But again, this episode was absolutely amazing, absolutely intense, and you know, definitely brutal. Uh, I think that it had a lot of things that you look for in an episode, and I can't wait for next week. So with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close. I want to thank all of you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, don't be afraid to leave them. Feel free to subscribe. I do have more videos coming. And if you have any suggestions for future videos that you would like to see, don't be afraid to suggest them. Have a very wonderful evening, and thank you very much for watching.